District 9 takes place in 1982 South Africa. A giant ship containing alien creatures are forced to land on Earth. These creatures known as prawns simply are stranded on this planet and are subsequently put into an encampment known as District 9. This same encampment is where they keep harbored extreme criminals. One day, a man named Wickus, who is forced to relocate these creatures away from these small little shack homes that they were forced into, is exposed to a toxin that is slowly turning him into the very prawns in which he fears. Now it's up to Wickus and Christopher to hopefully find a new home for the prawns and a cure for Wickus. District 9 is a movie that metaphorically represents apartheid, an act of South African racial segregation that still affects part of Africa today. But using the backdrop of science fiction, it allows us to distance ourselves and see it more from a perspective of humanity, ironically through the eyes of the aliens. And it forces us to ask the question, how can fear of differences create hatred. When the prawns first land on Earth, they are completely isolated, like being stuck on a dirt road away from your home, only this time it's an actual planet. These prawns merely just want to get put back to their own home. Unfortunately, due to their technological limitations and fuel sources, they're unable to do so. You can even see it in parts of the movie with the interviewer simply trying to figure out what the prawns want, immediately assuming that they are a threat upon humanity, and the prawns simply replying, they just want to go home. A feeling that each of us can kind of feel a resonance with, just wanting to feel safe. The prawns in their nature are disgusting comparatively to humans for a reason. This outward horror and disgusting nature is a reflection of the very society that they parallel. Humanity in itself is seen as just normal, whereas the prawns represent differences and non-human. Because they are non-human, you should not be able to relate to them. But in actuality, their differences is what makes them more relatable because they do not look like us and therefore they have to struggle in a different way in a context to it. Many people have to deal with these sort of differences but it's even harder when it's a part of who you are. The military and the humans see prawns as disgusting creatures, like a bug. They see them as disgusting nature-ridden things. Things they can't quite explain because they're not like them. Subsequently, they feel no remorse killing or separating or distancing themselves from them. And through that lack of compassion, they themselves become the monsters that they so fear. They become the very thing that they are afraid of. Those creatures see them more as disgusting than they could see them on a physical level. Because the actions that they use to harm these creatures psychologically, emotionally, and physically creates permanent lasting damage. Like a dog in a cage that's constantly beaten. Eventually the dog will fear and only know fear. One of the most underlying themes of the film is the fear of unlove. Wickes constantly looks at himself and sees the mutation of the things that he becomes and is worried that the love of his life, his wife, will never be able to see him. And yes, even though he will be alive, he won't be who they see as himself. That fear of becoming something you may not even recognize is a universal fear that we all have to, at some point, realize as time moves forward so does the change upon ourselves. The option of choice between what we could be and what we are becoming may not necessarily be the same thing, but they are a part of who you are. Eventually, as the movie concludes, Christopher makes a promise to Wickus that he will come back, but it will take three years, and in that time, he will save him. The movie ends with an unknowing feeling, an unknowing certainty of what will become of the future. As Christopher takes off in the ship 
and goes to presumably his home planet. We're left feeling this overwhelming sense of uneasiness. We are in Wickus's shoes. And even though he is no longer a human, he's no longer the person he was. He is a new being. For better or worse, he is a new being. This may not necessarily be a representation of race, but this is a representation of acceptance of differences. Wickus's immediate fear of what accepting could mean, what will become of him, what will change about him, and what is happening to his body is a fear that so many people have to face because change does not matter how you feel. Change is going to happen. We each have to face our own changes within our lives and complications of issues that come forth to us whether we are ready or not. And through Wickus's journey, he actually learns to use those differences in a positive way. He is able to access weapons that are specifically made for the prawns to fight against the enemies that are seeing him as an abomination, that want to use him as a tool for their own evil purposes. So how can fear of differences create hatred? Hatred, by its very definition, is wanting something either harmed or destroyed because you despise it so much. And with differences, those are things that many of us can never change. We can't change who we are, but we can change how we perceive ourselves and how we perceive others. The differences in which we live our lives and some things we can change and some things we can't, but those differences make up the very foundation of who they are. And that fear in which other people see you, those aren't things that we can change, just as the very nature of differences can't be changed either. You can't expect someone's hatred to dictate your differences, and your differences cannot dictate how someone feels. The only way that things can ever change is to eventually be able to accept people for their differences and learn to live with it, because those people aren't going anywhere. Your hatred can overwhelm and even kill you, and it can cause harm to so many other people. But ultimately, the question you need to ask yourself is, which is more harmful, the hatred or the differences? But in the end, these aren't answers. They are hypotheticals. So the next time you start to feel anxious, you just tell yourself, hey, I'm having a panic attack. I'm not going to die. In fact, in 15 minutes, I'll probably feel fine. Well, what do I do until then? Murph, start him on 50 milligrams of Zoloft and a half a milligram of Xanax as needed. Here, tip. This should provide you with some relief, and we'll just meet next week, same time, same place. Okay? Thank you, Charlie. No problem.